short introduction to the usage of the Windy Radio Sound plugin. I'm using Chrome on a MacBook here. First, let's uh, load the plugin. We need to do this by name using this option. We type in the name here, it's called Radio Sunday, and we load and activate it. It comes up after a couple of seconds. Now, let's have a look at what we're seeing on the screen here. Zooming out a little bit, you see lots of markers on the map. So let's just hide that for a second. Um, these are about uh, 700 or so stations worldwide. Uh, 730 uh, right now, uh, which deliver radio sound S and data. You see ring-shaped markers, uh, fat and slim rings, and sometimes you also see, see ship symbols. These are weather ships which provide uh, radio sound S and data. Now, uh, zooming in, uh, let's look at a particular ascent like from Prague. Um, you see the pane opens on the left side here. Um, we see the actual flight path of the radio sound and uh, the measured values from that, uh, from that balloon flight. The red line is the temperature line, the thick blue line is the humidity line. And you see that if you click on the path, uh, you will find that the marker in the SQT diagram follows that. So there's a two one to one correlation on uh, these two diagrams. Down here you find a slider which can set the uh, age of the oldest essence still to be shown. Uh, usually you just look at the last 24 hours or so. Now we have the, the radio sound essence from Prague here at the moment. Um, this one is with a fat ring, meaning it has a high resolution data format available. It's a so called FM94 format. Um, a slim ring means that only a lower resolution um, essence uh, is available. You'll notice that if you click a slim ring marker symbol, there are much fewer uh, measurement values in the vertical here. Uh, as compared to, say, for a, a, a higher resolution S and like here from Nuremberg. Now let's go back to Prague. Um, in this diagram, uh, we, uh, we can focus in on the lower levels, which might be interesting for some pilots, which might be just using the lower couple of thousand meters. We can zoom in like so. So the top would be like something like 5,000 meters up here. Um, you see more detail here in the lower level levels. Um, on the left here, you see an indication of clouds. Um, that's derived from dew point uh, and uh, temperature difference from the spread. Um, what you also see uh, is a comparison to forecast models provided a, a the forecast for this location and time is available. In our case, we can actually compare that to something like five different models. And in the diagram, you see here two lines of wind barbs. The first column is the measured values, and the second uh, column is the forecasted values. So it's actually quite interesting to see on how well they correspond. In general, direction looks like it matches up by a few de degrees here. And um, right now we have the, um, we focus in on the radio sound ASIN, but with this button we can focus on the forecast. You see the forecast in 4,200 meters would be 11 knots, and the measured value was 12.6 knots, so that's a pretty close match. Uh, we can compare this to several different models and click through them. Uh, uh, you'll see also the forecasted humidity and temperature lines. Uh, so that gives us an indication on how well the, the models matched the, the forecast, the, the actual measured data by the radio sound. 
we can uh, enlarge the window here a bit, which might be useful for presentations, um, but it cuts off some of the lower half here. Um, going back um, to the map display, uh, currently we have about 730 active stations delivering radio sound data, um, on, on average about two a day. Uh, we keep those for 14 days, uh, so we have about 20,000 or so essence online. By default, only the latest essence is shown, so for Prague that would be today 6 Zulu, 6 o'clock Zulu. Um, but you can go back in history, for instance, with this, uh, you can sh uh, with this button list which essence are uh, still online and click a particular one. Or you can zoom to the slider here and uh, see the uh, sc scan through the past, if you will. Now, um, down here, there are two more drop downs. One is the station detail the, that gives some detail on the, on the station location, the uh, VMO identifier, um, elevation and whatnot, all sorts of uh, some uh, fixed data, then some data on the flights, the timestamps, when it was released, when it was first heard on radio, last, uh, last recorded point, uh, when the file arrived and when the file was uh, converted in online, uh, some detail on the uh, radio sound, the manufacturer serial number, transmit frequency and all sorts of detail on the on the sensors. Uh, down here you see uh, a section called data reference that specifies which data source this SN file was received from, which format it was in, and you can actually re retrieve the underlying source file, uh, in that case so-called buffer format, um, in case you want to uh, see the original data or, or to track a bug, for instance. Now let's close this station detail. You can also download the, um, uh, the underlying data um, in either comma separated value format or in GeoJSON format, which might be easier to process. Now uh, on the um, meanings of all these lines, it needs, it needs a more qualified person than me. I'm just an MBA and I, I'm just writing the software. I don't understand what this is doing, but I understand it's very useful uh, um, once you know what you're doing. Now, um, we can actually uh, temporarily hide the plugin which might be interesting uh, if we look at other layers and reactivate uh, the radio sound plugin later. For instance, I'm zooming in on the radar layer for now. Let's load that, it will take a little time. And let's see, uh, I'm looking for the Moscow uh, sense. yes, here we have it. Um, uh, and let's see how well the radar uh, loop and the uh, radio sound data match. Well, it's loading the animation right now. Okay, and you see that the pass of the radar pattern corresponds very nicely to the pass of the radio sound. We can go back in on the radio sound display for this particular ascent, and uh, we also see the cloud layers here, and go back to the uh, forecast to various forecast modes. So that's very helpful in comparing different uh, um, layers. Uh, it is also very useful to um, uh, compare radio essence with uh, radio sound essence with a tractor is generated with a tractor plugin. Those two are compatible and um, will happily coexist. So you can do your tractory and then later on 
reactivate the radio sound plugin and look at the flight paths and flight data of a nearby radio sound uh, essence. That concludes my first little presentation on the radio sound plugin and I hope somebody else with more Meteor Cloud tunes in and explains the XQT in more detail.